Hey, welcome back to episode three, where we're going to build a web app. We used to call this weekend web app, but we can still call it that if we want. But uh, considering I'm doing this on the weekdays and the weekends, let's <laughs> we call it whatever we want. What we're The goal here is to build a web app. We're going to continue on with what we've been doing. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor for this live stream and this video, which is Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been working with Dev Mountain for quite some time now, and... It's been a fantastic experience. I've even had the pleasure of visiting some of their campuses. So Dev Mountain is a coding boot camp with several locations. You can see they're in Lehigh, which is in Utah, Dallas, and then Phoenix. So um, one cool thing about them is even if you're not in those cities, they actually provide housing with their locations. And they have multiple courses, including iOS development, software Q&A, user experience, and web development. So if that's something that you're thinking about, you're thinking maybe a boot camp's for me, might I recommend you go to devmountain.com and check them out to get additional details. All right, with that being said, we got all that fun business stuff out of the way. Let's jump into our project, throw the music on here, open up the old text editor. Uh, before we do that, we should probably start with the Trello board. See what we have on the list here. Cool. So, best website to learn web dev? We're building it, dog. <laughs> uh, it depends what you're looking for, but I, I really like Free Code Camp. I think it's a great uh, introductory site to get people up and going. So one cool thing uh, is we got my uh, mockups for the category page here, which uh, essentially this page, and we're going to be building this today. This page is a generic sort of, we're going to worry about this stuff later. These are components that I might build at a later date, but we have some simple like okay well you're on javascript what are the main parts of javascript and then you have this very simple click on the buttons and it takes you to the actual details page which i'm not quite sure what that looks like yet um we started building a modal but i'm uh i'm waiting for my modal mock-up and we're currently in the process of uh making our styles better so i think what we're going to do today is we are going to i think we're going to build this category page and so that's what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and I got my, uh, I got to find some good music real quick. Here we go. That's better. Um, we got our text editor open. Are we in the right project? Nope. Of course not. Cool. Uh, so as always, we're going to be running our tests from the bottom here. Make sure we don't break anything as we go. So that'll be good like so. I just got done with my work day about 30 minutes ago. And so I'm like, all right, cool. Now I get to work on my stuff. Let's go ahead and do a fresh install real quick. All right. All our tests are passing. Great. We have 17 tests in the application so far. So far, testing the functionality. All right. Zero vulnerabilities. NPM start. Let's do it. What are you? So, oh, same as this. What do you mean? What am I? I'm a beast. <laughs> All right. So, God, my mouse is acting very weird today. All right. Um, we're going to do some lazy loading. So, we have views, and we're adding a new view to our application. So, let me bring that Trello board over here real quick. And then I'll bring this over here so I can see the chat. All right, cool. All right. Let's go ahead and launch our little browser preview. Come back to that. So we're gonna create a new folder here called categories. Categories, category. Category. Cool. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create a few files. So we're gonna need a category module because this is gonna be lazy loaded, right? So we'll do that. We can go ahead and jump into home module. Well, a lot of the same stuff. And we'll come. Let's 
so on with my mouse. So just copy pasta this into here. All right, cool. So we have some stuff set up here. So we'll just call this category module. Now, we want to lazy load this module. Actually, we're going to do some setup, so we don't need this view quite yet. So we're going to jump into our app routes here. See, we have this path. We need to find some new paths. So our path here is going to be a category. And then we are going to load the children, which is just essentially a promise. And we are going to import, and we're going to put the path for where we want to get that. So this will be views slash category slash category module. There we go. Cool. So now that we've done that, we have set up the path. It's not doing anything quite yet because it doesn't. We haven't set up the child routes, but we will. So let's. Mouse, man. All right, I'm gonna stand up. I've been sitting all day. All right, so let's go ahead and create a routes file. So I'll call this category routes. Yes. Back this in a second. And now we need to create our category component. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy Tuesday, everybody. So home components is obviously going to be category component. Cool. All right. And let's jump back to our routes. Hey, back to back streams. You know what, man? I've been really enjoying live stream and building this app. Like, I don't know, I've just been enjoying, like, t telling you, man, Joshua Flukes got me motivated, bro. The LJF. JF's been going hard, and I got, I'm trying to keep up now. Game respects game, you know what I mean? When you, happy Tuesday. When you notify your company that you're quitting, do you still get paid during that month, or how does that work? Uh, well, so typically what you're going to do when you uh, decide that you're you're moving on is you're going to give uh, two weeks at a job. That's sort of the standard. I wouldn't give any more. I wouldn't give any less. I give two weeks. 
Uh, the reason I wouldn't give any more is some companies might cut you. Some people might be really upset and very unprofessionally say, all right, well, today's your last day. And then you may not get paid after that, right? Um, uh, most companies will be okay with it. Most good companies, I should say. And they'll say, okay, and that's your two weeks. They might negotiate with you to work a little bit extra, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so you're going to get paid for the days that you're there. But you just got to be a little bit careful. That's all. All right, so we added our, these are our home routes. We're going to call these category. Routes, those are our child routes. So let's close, close others. And let's go back to our home routes, our home module real quick, because uh, we need this router module dot for child. Load our routes into there. And we need to add category component. And we also need to add set of home routes. We want those to be. All right, cool. So if we did this right, we should if we do H. We should have set this up to use lazy loaded child routes. Launch this back up now. Go to local host call 4200. Uh, app routes unexpected, failed to compile. Let's control C that. Let's see what happens here. Category views, category category. Hmm. All right, let's go to app module real quick. Looks right to me. Is that it? That semicolon blew it up, huh? The good old semicolon. So it's not a legal thing here. You can quit on day one. So, you know, at will employment goes both ways. A lot of times people only focus on how companies can just get rid of you and go. That's valid for you also. Two weeks is just the expected. All right, cool. Uh, so if we did this, all right, so we fixed our error. Let's go localhost 4200. Cool. So last video we worked on the modal. Uh, speaking of which, let me actually just take that out. We're going to not take the whole modal out, but eventually we're going to um, have a very nice modal. But uh, I'm waiting on a mock-up for that. Shared. No. Views. Um, I guess comment it out for now. We started it. Uh, everything we did is going to be pretty good, but we're going to rework that in a little bit. All right. So if we did that, if we did uh, everything correctly, cool. So our uh, category works just fine. Um. This will take us to our generic category page, but we don't even have a generic category page. We're not there yet. What we actually want is for this to be a route, which means it's going to be something like this, colon uh, category in our route. And we're going to subscribe to what that is to figure out what JSON data we want to pull from this. But before we do that, we're actually going to build 
before we go and set up the routing, let's go ahead and just build. Uh, what do I want to do here? Do I want to set up the routing first? I think I want to set up the routing first. Cool. You know what I also want to do? You see how this Hello World's on here? I want to give it a little bit of padding and margin on the left-hand side always. So let's go to our app component.css. You see how we have this main? Let's go ahead and just give it some padding of 10px. I think that should, there you go. Eh. Let's do 20. Cool. All right, that works. And then uh, that way we're always in from the sides a little bit. You know what, let's do this. I want to do 30px on the sides and 20px up top. Do I have that backwards? I think I have that backwards. Yeah, I got that backwards. Yeah, it goes top then right. All right, cool. So just adding a little bit of a container around here, right? Um, now that we've done that, so in our actual category component itself, we're gonna have a constructor. The reason for it is we're gonna find a service here, a category service, because although we're gonna be hitting a JSON right now, we eventually are gonna want to uh, connect to a, a backend service. So within category, we'll go ahead and create a folder here because right now this is the only service that we it's going to be using. And a new folder in here, we'll call this category. Imagine that. Uh, so uh, in here, we'll create a new file called category.service.ts. A new file here called um, a category. I haven't come up with a good naming convention for an abstract class quite yet. Category dot service dot spec dot ts, and then uh, one more file here. We have a category dot service dot ts. We'll just call it a category dot service. Uh -oh. All right, uh, before we do that though, we've created a new component. Let's just go ahead and add some basic tests to it. No big deal. We'll copy some of this over. Just to initialize our component. We'll do the same thing, close. You, want, you really wanna write your tests as you go. It saves you a lot of headache. So. All right, so that should pass. What's going on, everybody? All right, cool. 19 and 19, everything's passing. So my middle name should be wealthy. Hey, man, you got that cash. Support the channel, you know what I'm saying? Support, hook a brother up. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so let's look at our mock-up real quick. We have a couple pieces of data. We're gonna have a, um, a logo. We're gonna have a title. We're gonna have a description, we're gonna have an array of values, and we're gonna have some real, this might not be part of the JSON, I don't think this is gonna be. So I think all this right here is gonna be unique. So let's just define a, a JSON real quick. We'll call this data. 
Eh, let's define it as models. In models, we'll, co we'll create a data. And we'll create a new file. We'll call it category.json. And in here, what we're going to do is we are going to export a const. Actually, just rename this. Category dot TS. Oh, not major capital TS. We essentially going to be JSON. Uh, and we're going to call this category underscore data. And what we're going to have in here is some. You know, remember how I said we had our models? Cool. Now we're going to create our category dot model dot ts. We're going to export a class category. And in here, we're going to have a couple things. We're going to have a public ID, which is going to be a string. We're going to have a public, um, what do we want to call this? Um, title, I suppose. Also be a string. And then we have a public description. Which will also be a string. And then we will have a public. What do we want to call this? I think we're going to call this topics, which will be. Right now we're going to call it any array. But I think each. What's up, Code Poppy? I think our models here, we're going to have a topic.model.ts. And in here, let's go ahead and export class category. Or excuse me, topic. And in here we'll have a public key. Well, not this ID. That'll be a string. And then we'll also have a public label. That'll be a string. And we'll just create a constructor real quick. Data here will be optional. And then we'll create a const here called defaults. We'll unwrap the data here, but we'll give ID empty string, and we'll give this label an empty string, and then we'll say this dot ID is equal to defaults dot ID. This dot label is equal to defaults dot label. Cool. And now that we've done that, we can go over our topics. So this is an array of topics. Go back to that in a second. All right. Cool. So let's go ahead and do the same thing that we just did a second ago. Add a constructor, optional data. Who knows what's going to come in? Create our cons. With defaults. And wrap our data. So topics be an empty array. Uh, do I have to design layouts as part of my job? Not typically, no. Um, I mean, what you'll find is that off. As you go and you, you work on back office tools, things like that don't really matter all that much. It's more about, um, so you might have a little bit more input or you might not get a mock-up entirely. Um, but as you progress, what you might find is that on more client-facing things, that's not gonna be the case. And even more so that, you know, you can, you can always give suggestions on how to improve things um, on a good team anyhow.
So if you're wondering why I'm setting up these defaults, setting up these values, is anytime you have data, uh, you should set up a constructor and set, assign some default values. Part of the reason is I won't have to do all these null checks in my code and dirty it up. The model being populated should, is part of the model itself. And so what we're doing here is we are saying, hey, if topics comes back, if for whatever reason our API fails and topics isn't defined, we have an empty array that we can map still to topic or, you know, you get, you get the idea here where we are taking these values and we're making sure that we don't have to muddy up our code because of the single responsibility principle. The, the responsibility of the model to be populated is the model's responsibility. So it's all in one spot. So this dot topics is equal to uh, defaults dot topics. And now because we're doing this this way, we can actually map the topic to be a new topic. Pass that in there. Cool. So you can see we have everything that we need here. Very nice. Uh, so we have our category. So we're gonna have a couple keys here. We have JavaScript. Be an object. Uh, how do I want to do this? I don't really like this already. I don't want to create my category data. So that would be the the ID we're passing. All right. So we're just gonna create one for JavaScript. JavaScript has a ID. Uh, actually, let's not just create. So instead of category, let's rename this. This would be of type. I like what I'm doing better now. All right. Uh, React has like a lot of jobs in it right now, so. Blame me for doing React. Uh, let me go get some description. Let's see what the wiki says on JavaScript. Finally, we are going to have topics, and honestly, we don't need this new category. This is fine. And this will be all right. Uh, we'll come back to topics. I mean, views growing, yeah. Uh, but React is definitely dominating the market. So Angular is good if you want to work with Enterprise. Uh, Enterprise is good because they pay the most money, typically. They have the best benefits, typically, because uh, they have the most money, typically. Um, so. All right, so uh, we'd find our category model. We have our JavaScript data. Now, what we're going to do here is this is going to be the parameter we're going to pass into our route. So remember I created this uh, category route? What we actually want to do is here 
have it be something like slash category and then we're gonna get that value but before we do that let's go back to our service and we need to just create that. oh my god uh, that should have There we go. Alright, cool. So um, this is eventually going to be asynchronous, but right now what we're going to do is we are going to go to here, export, abstract, Uh, so what we're going to be practicing right now is the dependency inversion principle. So this is going to make us invert our dependencies. And what is this awful song I have on? Uh, and that way it's going to be easier to mock out and things like that down the road. You'll see. Um, I was actually discussing this very topic with my boss earlier. And um, he told me to uh, take a look at... Uh, what do you call it? The um, factory pattern, if I remember correctly. Uh, I haven't had a chance to yet. So what we're going to find is a public git category. This is going to return back a prompt this of a category. Whoa there, cowboy. Okay, cool. So we have our, our definition here. And if we jump back to our category service, this is going to extend a category service. Now you'll notice it's blowing up because we don't have this. So public. Public get category. This is going to take in a param, which will be a string. This will actually be the ID. And actually, let's go ahead and call this ID. Fix that, fix that. This will, of course, return a category, the promise of a category. My auto tag closed. It's going crazy. All right. So eventually what we're going to do, oh, we'll do it right now. Why not? So we'll simply write a switch case. And in here case that auto complete now right return so I'm good Connor how you doing man we are going to return JavaScript data. All right, cool. Uh, so obviously this isn't asynchronous or anything, but this will be a promise because we put the async tag on it. And uh, I don't even think we need to await it. So if we pass the ID, it's going to return something else is going to return nothing. So 
now that we've done that, let's go into, we have to actually inject. We have to inject our category service and we actually have to go to our category module. Is there a benefit to using the abstract class? Uh, if I remember, uh, other than interface. So yes, uh, you're gonna see in a second that if we had an interface, we wouldn't be able to do what I'm about to do, which is um, to inject the um, declaration. So, uh, so, always forget. The so use class and provide. All right, so in the imports here, we're gonna add a new one. This will be an object. We're gonna put use. I always get this back. All right, so let's my view extensions causing issues. I haven't used Flash or Django, sorry. I'm a, I'm a JavaScript guy. Uh, and you'll see we have our category service. And then here we have our, I might have this backwards. A Got it backwards. Oh my god, I just did this the other day. I always get this messed up. One second, I gotta. Get an example real quick. All right. So that's definitely that. Order matter. So we want to provide our abstract. Let's go to our Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's it's in the wrong stuff. This is um not imports, it's uh I think it's providers. There we go. That's why we're doing it wrong. Okay, so if we had an interface, we wouldn't be able to provide this because it would hold implementation details. Cool. So we've added our service. Now we can create our mock. Uh, before we move forward, we can create a 
our mock service. Now, so export class mock category service. And this will extend that uh, abstract class we just did a second ago. Public get category ID string. Just make that an any. And we'll do a switch. I'll say, uh, actually, we'll just say, um, We'll create a public variable here and say last category. Last category ID. And then we'll return new category. And in here we'll pass in an ID. All right, cool. So that's our mock for later testing. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to create just two quick tests to make sure that this category exists. So all we have is a get category. I don't know that I even want to write a test for that specific functionality because it's, I guess we should. Control. Does anyone know what the command is to 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 close this this thing? Control B. There we go. All right. I saw that in a CSS Tricks video earlier, uh, or a design course. I forget what it, the hell it was called. So let's go ahead and write our. Our course, our service, our category service. So, if some of you guys are wondering, like, yo, man, what, why is Dylan doing this? I'm trying to build this as I would in the working world. So, like, you say, okay, if Dylan was building a video documentation site for a company that's paying him real money, like, say someone's paying me $10,000 a month, which is basically what I make, uh, make a little bit more than that, but we'll just say that. Um, this is what I would give them. I'd give them something that was fully tested, I'd give them something that was uh, not airproof, but I'd have high confidence in. And so this is why uh, there's a little bit of setup as we do these things, right? Uh, to do them properly. It's not always the most glamorous stuff to some people, but. Is there a steep learning curve from being okay at JavaScript to learning something like Angular? In a sense, but not because of, not because of uh, like Angular or frameworks complexity, um, but because at the end of the day, there's a lot of more, Angular specifically goes heavy into concepts, which I think a lot of people don't like. I personally think it's one of its strengths, um, but I'm just one person. All right. Um, cool. So we have uh, two new tests, 21 and 21 passing. Um, so we did a lot of stuff, right? We created our mock, which we were not even gonna use yet. We created our abstract class, which we we're gonna be injecting. We created some models here. Um, and we created a data set, but we haven't really got anything on the screen yet. 
so what we need to do next angular has too much boilerplate see you 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 grow to appreciate it man that's all one day i believe in you dog <laughs> um i i can understand that viewpoint though all right uh so what we want to do is we want to add this id to the route here and if we did this right in our category component cool we have this constructor and we're gonna need to do um it's been a second since i got the angular route params give me a second what do i need to inject here All right, so in our constructor, we're gonna have a private route of type activated route, and we might actually make a mock for that as well. Uh, then we'll have a private category service of type category service. Cool, now, now that we did that, I think some of our tests might break. Argument for route was not defined. Uh, for now, since we're not doing anything with it, and we haven't written any additional tests, we'll do null and null. No big deal. Close that. Close that. All right. So what we want to do is get that ID out from there. We're going to use the ng on init. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to subscribe to get that ID. So it's going to be this dot route dot query params dot, dot filter. I like that. Subscribe params. And let's just see what we get here. All right. So what we should get is a param with an ID if we did that right. So we're going to go to slash category slash JavaScript. No provider for category service. No provider for category service. Oh, that's because this should be a category service. We inject the actual, uh, there we're injecting the uh, abstract class. Hmm. Why? Where is my ID, dog? Where could it be? Is that what it needs to be? Oh, you know what? They changed it, I think. Hmm. 
There we go. Params. So, this is going to give us our params. And you can see we have our ID now. So now that we're subscribed there, we can do this. And really, just to clean this up real quick, I'm going to create a private function here called get category data or update category data. This will take in an ID of a string. Yeah, I know. Uh, this will be void. And then uh, what we're going to need here, public property called category of type category. And one cool thing that we can do is we can set this equal to a new category so that we don't have to do all these NGF checks and all this crap like that. Oops. So let's go ahead call this dot update category data. Actually, we don't need the idea, do we? We're going to be getting in here. And then with that param, hey Jose, how's it going, man? With that param, we are going to say this dot category service. This will be our async method. And we'll say this dot category equals this dot category service. We're going to await it because it's asynchronous. And we're going to pass an ID. Oh, uh, dot get category. And this isn't actually asynchronous. This is asynchronous. All right, and then console.log this dot category. So if we set this all up right, what should happen is we get ID out of our route params when this component loads. It, once we have that, we call get category, which checks this. Just got an internship offer for the fall. Good for you, man. And then this returns our JavaScript data. Save it. right bam there it is so you'll notice here if we do like HTML5 which we don't have anything for that it gets undefined all right we haven't done anything to deal with error handling and whatnot and um, you know eventually you'll add a uh, we'll add something that redirects but now that we have that set up we have our data here which is pretty cool right um, All right, so let's uh, I don't really want to create a mock. I don't want to create a mock for angular stuff. So what we're going to do is um, we need to expand out our category testing because we want to make sure that it always does it, right? So we'll have a general and then our general will have a uh, another describe in here and this will be on init and then we will in general say let we'll have a let component of type category component and we'll have a for each of our things we're going to say category component oops component equals new category component 
put null in here. And then remember that uh, mock category service? So we'll s mock cat. We'll actually just do category service. Remember how we mocked that out earlier? And we said, oh, hey, we're going to extend it as well. So now, without even having to typecast it or anything, we can go ahead and say category service equals new mock category service. We can pass this into here. Cool. Uh, the last thing we have to do is create a, a mock our activated route. And in here, what do we want to do? All right, let's see if this actually works. All right. So if I set this up properly, what should happen is we've created this observable, and then we've used the Angular router method to um, convert this. we should be able to subscribe on. So what do we really care about at the end of the day in our category component? At the end of the day, all we really care about is this dot category gets updated. We have to make sure that we do that. So a couple things, I'm gonna async that, uh, not this rather, on init it, updates category that's all we care about we don't care that it passes an ID we don't care about any of that so we're gonna arrange our data like we have always done let component equal to null excuse me component dot category equals to null and then we'll say act, we will await component.ng on init. So this will be async. And then we will assert expect component.category.id. Excuse me, we can do this. So, remember we created our mock category service? So 
So we want to just see that the last category got updated. So we say component dot Oh no, uh, we can do uh, this way. Category service dot What is going on here? Am I going crazy? That's there. This should category service dot last Oh, I see, I see where I see, I messed something up around somewhere. Hmm. Let me look at something real quick. I'm almost positive I set this up right, but obviously I didn't, so. So we could try something different here. All right, let's let's actually check the component. I have to figure out why that's giving me an error. Not to be defined. I better get dot id to be JavaScript. All right, and if that doesn't work. I wouldn't be too surprised. Let's try something here. Let's see if we ever get here. Categories declared here. Can I read property subscribe undefined? Okay. So it, it doesn't know our observable. So we just gotta fix that real quick.
one thing at a time. Let's see. Cannot read property. Subscribe to undefined. I might have to come back to this. I don't think we want to waste. Oh, wait a second. So, a little bit of debugging real quick. RxJS. I'll be the first one to tell you that. Every people, everyone loves it, but it's, oh my goodness. All right, all right. Uh, I'll come back to this. I'll fix this off stream. I don't want to spend too much time on this. So we're gonna comment this out for now. But come back to that. Uh, all right. All right, cool. So anyhow, we got the logic working. No big deal there. This is test though. Ugh. So now we've done that, what we want to do is finally get to here. We're finally going to put something on the screen. <laughs> Alright, now as a reminder, what we're going to be building is this, these items. We'll come put in some topic data in a second. That's really bothering me. And so, if we get the category search, let's just bring up the component. And we'll close this with Control B. All right, so we have our ID. Oh, we need the HTML, my bad. All right, so we don't say hello world. We instead want it to be an icon. Let's go to font awesome. All 
right, cool. Let's jump back into category real quick. this to return here is just the fun awesome class essentially so it's fab dash file dash js icon class icon classes and if it doesn't exist doesn't exist nothing will happen so case Oh my god, you know what? People give me such a hard time at work. We've used this in a couple spots. Enums are supposed to be singular, aren't they? We're going to make this plural just to make this easier. How you guys doing, man? You guys have been awfully quiet over there. You could make the argument that that this should be tested, and that'd be a fair argument. Um, I'll circle back to it. All right, so now we've done that. There's one more spot. We use this. I think it was our category service. So, div hashtag, just create a header, that's really what it is. Um, we have i,
Let's do this. So I'm making this a get solution. Is going on. <laughs> Why is it not picking up? Oh, did I not save the file? Why isn't it picking up my uh, thing? Alright, let me try something real quick. Oh, oh my god, that's why. That's so funny. Uh, it's not very funny. I forgot I'm not actually mapping anything because uh, this is all data we're just returning the data type so that's blowing up There we go. All right, got it. All right, cool. Well, let's do like H1 here. We'll put category dot Forgot all the name of these things. Okay, read a title and a paragraph. Category dot de not denounce description. Yeah, man, I've been I've been enjoying it a little bit, a little bit, little bit. You know what I'm saying? All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's go do a little bit of CSS on this. Uh, we've been we've been going a little hard in the personal projects right now, man. I'll be the I'll be the first one to tell you. So let's style this a little bit. I've been loving it though, man. I've been really enjoying myself. All right, cool. Um, first off, uh, so we're gonna make it a grid. Yeah. Uh, oh, one second, guys. I gotta check an email real quick. It appears I've won the Nigerian lottery. 
I just need to send them five thousand dollars to <laughs> to send it to me. It's crazy. You would think with all that money that uh garbage uh, <laughs> let's do a little bit of styling so we're gonna make it look a little bit like this to this top part um, all right display grid the icon about right uh, all right now that we've done that let's go and jump around over here We have a uh, CSS file here, variables. Need to put a um, JavaScript. And this will be. In our side nav, we. Uh, Add a color for JavaScript. While we're at it, let's go ahead and jump into the side nav and put dollars JavaScript there. Everything good there. And let's go ahead and take this color. This will be a CSS color. Cool, so now that we've done that, save that. All right, so that's all updated. We have our variables. Add import, what are we importing? And then 
looking for our icon. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We gotta do a dynamic class here. Set the color here to Okay. So now before we move forward to color this, we need to jump into our category closer this category on each all right um I always forget to This is it. Well, that doesn't feel like that worked now, did it? <laughs> Looks like it overwrote the class, which is not what we want it to do. What we actually want it to do is something more like this. Uh, we want it to be like category dot i classes plus space. Oh, better yet. I think this will do it. There's like 12 freaking ways to make classes and styles in Angular. I forget each one pretty much every time. Okay. Energy class is unknown. I know it's not a known property of. So we have these. Try this. Maybe I have to take this off. Huh. Well, look at the docs, man. Like am I, am I missing something? Let me see here. Ng class. It looks like I need to in category module import common module. 
That's what it's looking like. All right. That's the functionality of common module. How's it going, Shane? Can I read property trim of undefined? Got undefined for something. I see. I see. I see. Okay. 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 Uh. So remember our category model. Category. All right. Services. This model needs to to move out of services. But let me get this real quick. That was a, a mistake. Uh. All right, let's close all this real quick and fix this, these file locations. I did move. Cool. All right, so pretty sure we fixed that. There we go. So we got this going. All right, now that we've done that, what I want to do is bring this in a little bit. I don't think this we want this ever more than about 75% or so. Um, yeah, let's bring this in. We'll probably make that a little bit smaller if we wanted. What? What are you doing, bro? <laughs> All right, let's go to Stop blowing my shit up, man. I gotta build a back end for this. Alright, there we go. Property shouldn't matter. I'll just leave that there. All right. Uh, so we have this dynamic JavaScript class uh, for our CSS, but now we want to do a little bit more. So we want to do something like uh, the width should never be more than about fifty percent. And then we want to align the items. Align the item center. Align the content. 
No. Just so. Forget how to do this shit. Uh. <laughs> Yo, finally caught a live one. Landing my first engineering job last week, making $80,000 for this Raymond Johnson. Good for you, man. How much of a bump is that for you? What were you at before, if you don't mind me asking? So everyone can know how you just changed your life. Not in the West Coast, that's good. $13 an hour? There you go, son. There you go. Oh my goodness. Good on you, man. Yeah, we can just do. Let's do this. Uh, an icon. Line self. There's an end, isn't there? Thirteen dollars an hour to eighty dollars an hour, which it's been a while since I made eighty dollars an hour, but I think that's like thirty-five dollars an hour. Let's see, eighty thousand dollars a year is about thirty-eight forty-six dollars an hour. Not to count better benefits, without a doubt. Good on you, man. There we go. Justify self end on that. And then on this, we'll give it what a nice grid dash gap of 10 pixels. Grid dash column. Good on you, man. Life changing amounts of money right there. Thirteen to thirty eight fifty. Thirty eight fifty. Probably went from having no benefits, or might as well have no benefits, to uh real benefits. Good stuff, man.
There we go. That is the wrong one. Alright, cool. Not too shabby. It's coming together. Raymond Johnson. Might as well be calling this man Raymond James. That's how much money he's making. Uh, now we just need to create these little buttons. Uh, related topics. Might be good. Alright. Let's do the related topics, but before we do that, we did quite a bit so far. Um, we got about 15 minutes before the live stream ends. Uh, by the way, I haven't done any shameless promos, but if you guys are interested in my latest course, give me a second, I'm going to bring it up so I can shamelessly plug it. Um, so that you can go from $13 to $38. Oh my goodness. What a man. Go home, impress your, your wife. Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, future baby mama, I don't care. But if you're interested, I highly encourage you to check out my latest 100 front end interview question challenge where you can go out, answer those technical phone screen type questions in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, none of that. We're going to teach you some tips and tricks, some higher level things like the solid principles, which I include a full tutorial on. As well as how to answer this. Do you have any questions for me to make yourself stand out? As well as a bunch of interview prep to really make sure that you're out there killing it. Alright. And you can get that for $9.99 in the description below. $9.99 to potentially go to eighty k from $13 an hour seems like an excellent deal. Right, Raymond Johnson? <laughs> Back me up, bro. Uh, Alright. Um, cool. Let's, uh, now that we've done this. Let's go ahead and um, create a related topics real quick. And I th think we'll c call that a day. Um, God, it pisses me off that I didn't fix that testing stuff. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's do a push real quick. So we added a category component. Lazy loaded the category module. Created a category service and its models. I broke something. Not par said. Bad object head. What the hell? What does that mean? I'm going to copy this file over in case I accidentally rim wrap my file or something. All right, so according to the Googles, we need to
All right. We need to replace the core git file. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. I'm not even sure how that happened because we were just using this yesterday. downloads let's go to our documents video docs paste place all the files all right let's try this one more time get stage I think we did it Okay, commit dash m added category component models service and module. All right, not sure why I decided to blow up, but uh, now that that has happened, let's go ahead and cr create a generic category section right here uh you know what it's just great what time which we were almost at two hours i think this is a good spot to stop actually um <laughs> it's just it's just got categories up there oh my goodness uh you know what maybe I, should i keep going kind of want to keep going but I, I know I got calls later I gotta do now we're gonna build one more component I'm not done yet I can, f I can feel it in me that I want to keep going I'm just trying to be responsible you know what I mean? and that's that's not the way I roll in this life <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and create our components and then in components create a new folder and what do we want to call this let's look back at this um, related topics, maybe. Um, resources. I think resources might be it. It's sort of a, a side nav. It is a side nav. Ooh. Um, hmm. What do I call this? Let's, for now, call it, uh, resources. I lose internet guys I just want to say I appreciate you all because I hear thunder nearby and uh, that'll probably be the end of the live stream since I'm wrapping up anyhow alright there is that let's go to our category module
Oh, I also got to fix that test. The one that I had to create the activated route mock for. Film. Something set up improperly here. I think it's probably just too many things been crashing nonstop. Oh, that's not what I want it to be, to be defined. There we go. All right. So now we've done that. Let's open this. Let's uh, close others. And we will open up resources.scss. And we will also go to live browser preview. I still have to fully decide what it is that I'm putting in this main thing. resources. And on here, we'll put in like an H3 that says resources. Cool. Uh, and then give me a second. Nav, we're gonna have an H3. We're gonna give it a background. 
color. Cool. And we're going to give it a color of white. Cool. And our nav. Let's go here real quick. So there's our header. And then we're going to have a hash dash resources. Second. This idea of topics. Oh, CSS, I know, right? Uh, all right, so now that we've done that, let's say topics, and let's say display grid, and then we'll say uh, grid dash template dash columns. We'll say that's 300, 250 pixels, followed by one FR. Yeah, it looks about right. All right, cool. Just setting this up so we can kind of have a better idea of what to expect. All right, uh, now that we've done that, let's jump back to here. What in the hell happened there? All right, so we got resources, our H3 here. We wanna give it a height. The reason we wanna hard code a height here is, um, well, too big because <laughs> um, we want it to match what we're going to do the other ones as so let's do something like uh, 75 px and then we want to make this display grid cool now we need to center this
All right. God, I hate CSS sometimes. Ah. Uh. <laughs> There we go. Jesus Christ. What a headache that was. Oh my goodness. I gotta really uh, review Flexbox a little bit. I don't know it as good as I should. Alright. Um, so we got that set up. Now, doesn't look half bad. Uh, what we want to do is just create that. And for now, we'll just go ahead and we'll create a UL, LI, put books, LI, we'll put courses, and we'll worry about getting more content in there later. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? I put this in the wrong section. I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. Um, let's go ahead and with our UL here, we want that to be. What do we want that to be? Um, 
What's the color of that? That's the color of our side nav. So what is our side nav color? As I understand, there shouldn't. Oh, this H3 has pad uh, margin. The UL giving it padding. Yeah, UL's giving it padding. Alright, it's fine. Sure. And each one of these allies. Give it padding about five px. Actually, let's do like fifteen pixels and then uh, five px. Some padding bottom here. Actually, we're going to have that go with that other stuff in a second. So let's just let's give a cool little uh, green link color. What color is that? Boom. It's not looking too bad, right? Cool. So now that we've done that, I think that's a good spot to stop. We got a couple things that we still need to do. We need to make these links. We need to build the buttons. We need to get it going. But um, in terms of the category pages, it's coming together. Um, but uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I might live stream tomorrow. I've been really enjoying live streaming and uh, working on this side project. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's slowly but surely getting there. And uh, it's uh, we're taking away at it. At this point, we've put in, if we count, what were we, two hours and then four hours and then two hours? We've put in about eight hours on this thing to build an actual real application. Um, so pretty happy about that. But uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much. Uh, if you're interested in any of my courses, there's links in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.